Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, episode two, recap, the challenge, total madness. If you want to get into a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars, here's what you do. Subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle something you enjoy about the Pat Mayo Experience, and you'll be in a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars. You want to get into a $20 DK draw for this episode, smash the like button, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. Give me your MVP for the episode. Doesn't need to be a person. The MVP could be a thing. Paul Shaughnessy's in studio with me. My MVP for the episode, I have contenders here oh, wow. for MVP. My MVP for the episode, Anissa's reaction shots. They're pretty excellent. Like, you are not getting a whole lot of Anissa, but she's doing a lot with just visuals in the background and just being, like, taken aback by everything. Just like, what are you doing? Poor yeah. Jen with two ends. Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> 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 um yeah she wasn't jen wasn't exactly cut out for for the scene that is mtv the challenge good looking girl of course obviously um rogan rogan in my opinion the real mvp is rogan saying that he's going to think with his penis and actively continuing to think with his penis without any sort of shame or regret it's Rogan. But Anissa's reactions were pretty hilarious because, like, yeah, very, very, um, very, lots of expression about all of these crazy rookies and what they're up to. Well, this officially marks, I believe, Anissa's 20th year on reality TV. I recall watching The Real World Chicago in 2001. She was trapped in the house when 9-11 happened. Yeah. Like, I just, I so vividly remember that season. Mm -hmm. It was the same one where uh, Kara got banged. In the, in the bedroom, the first on-screen hookup on reality TV. Nice. So, you got to watch out for that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm wondering, because we're, there's a lot of people right now. This cast is way too big. Way too big. Now, it might work to its benefit, because the season might just go on forever, which you know, we kind of need right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I could use like four straight months of the challenge going on. <laughs> see <here>. But... <laughs> Like, there are just people who are non-existent in these episodes. Like, I don't think we saw Nani this entire episode. The whole Trinity, really. Like, uh, Kayla got a few. <laughs> got a few just when they were just like, by the way, this bear versus Kayla drama, it's going to happen. They just give you a little nugget just to be like, it's coming, but there's way too many people right now who need the screen time. Yeah, like, Nani non-existent in this episode. Anissa just got, like, facial reactions. I think she got, like, one confessional. Always good for a confessional. Anissa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although we, she's never going to top. I think it was Gauntlet 2. I will cut you with words, which mm -hmm. was just fantastic. Uh, no Jenna to speak of. Jenna's like, Jenna, and we got like one glimpse of Maddie, and I think she was wearing goth makeup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's good. Uh, it's good for you to not be getting yeah, that, right That's now. what I was going to ask you. Do you think that means they go farther into the season, or they have such a bad season full of non-drama that they're just like... We're not going to dedicate any resources to showing you on TV. Could be a little bit of both. Could be. I, I don't expect Jenna to do well if I mean, she's not if, good. I mean, if you some of your top players, if they're not getting screen time right now, I wouldn't be too, too concerned. It's like there's There are so many people in the house right now. There's only so many mouths to feed. There's only an hour and a half of stuff to show. This, ep this episode here was like, there wasn't really all that much like drama and stuff like that going on like i think it was you know the first episode a little bit more like amped up fire like you have like hot hot takes coming out of it this was a little bit more like it was a gen episode it was it was kind of like yeah it happened it was okay yeah so you, you end up with jen jen with two ends that makes her the second gen with two ends mm -hmm. in challenge history not quite as good as the first gen with two ends no. although my wife did comment that she thinks that jen is like super hot I think everyone kind of agreed on that one across the board. Clearly. Not good at the challenge. No. Doesn't seem like an athlete. No, not at all. Especially when you go up against Jenny. Yeah, that that's gotta be the biggest squash match, eh? And Ever? It's it's gotta be up there. There was one That'll be a squash match that is like forgotten. But like what? Here's my take. I know I'm jumping way, way ahead, but I get the sense that they were supposed to do a two out of three there. Like oh, and the, way, the way that it was edited, 
and kind of like how they're like lollygagging around at the end. Like I get the sense that it was probably supposed to be two out of three, but they probably turned to Jen after and they're like, "Do you want to do that again?" Because there's like they're like, "We could we can edit that." To I know, just well pretend because it happened so fast. It's just it's like, why wouldn't you do two out of three on a challenge like that, right? Sure, and we've seen this happen in the past. Like there have been sections of the final cut out of the episode. Yeah, because they don't like go along with the story whatsoever. Sure. So that could have been two out of three. And Jenny killed her twice. They're like, we probably only need to show one of these. I bet I I think maybe even they were gonna do two out of three, but the first one was such what was such a shit kicking that they're like, you don't have a chance, so we don't have to run this again. I thought they were I thought when they went down and they voted Jenny and the Jenna that Jen was just gonna quit. Like that was just like, I don't wanna do this. I yeah. don't want to face If Jen. it was something physical, she may have, but like it wasn't. All right, so we don't have the fantasy scoring for the episode no. as of yet. So if, if you're in the Challenge Fantasy League, I'm sure the scores will be updated by the time you actually watch this. Yeah. Rob slacking. He had to watch Survivor. Couldn't do everything. Wow. Ike, listen. It, I'm just, I'm messing with him. He does a lot of work. and He does a lot of work. I don't need him like hitting me up in my DMs on Twitter like while I'm watching the show because like, I'm watching it. I like to, I like to give the commercials some breathing time. So I can just kind of fast forward through them. Same the com- here. Commercials. On yeah, the I challenge. don't start watching until very like, long. By the way. Yeah. They're not your average commercial. I don't typically start watching until about twenty after eight. Yeah. Um. I like the I like the eight o'clock though. Oh yeah, absolutely. eight o'clock is fantastic. Well, yeah, I, no, like I I press pause and I have it queued up. We're ready to roll. And uh, yeah, right at like the the opening little graphic, like this contains whatever nudity and swear, I don't know, whatever sexual content or whatever. There was sexual content. <laughs> I, yeah, I basically I always hit pause on that. Wait about twenty minutes. I'll prep myself uh, for the episode. And and yeah, no, it's perfect that way. So yeah, Rob's always a little bit ahead in the DMs, and yeah. eventually I catch up, and then I'll I'll respond. Yeah, but. I just want I just want to wait for it to be over. I don't like to be spoiled, especially now. There's like nothing on TV. Mm-hmm. I don't want the show ruined for me. That's horrible. Yeah. No, for sure. So Jen with two ends. She's the V two point of Jen with two ends. Terrible version. Not mm-hmm. an upgrade. It's like when Windows Vista came out. <laughs> Yeah. And everyone was very triggered by Windows Vista. Also, she's doing her confessionals wearing a fucking thriller jacket, but it's like a motorcycle thriller jacket. So it's not even an upgrade on the original thriller jacket. She is just horrible at this. I don't know how she got on the show. She looked great in the jacket. Look, she looks great all the time. Yeah. There's a lot That's of good. That's how she got on the show. There is a lot of good looking women on the show. She needed to cut. That can't be it. And you talk about squash matches. Poli- politicking had to happen here to, to keep her in the show. True. I, I did like that she turned to Rogan for advice because Rogan was sitting in front of a chessboard to make himself seem very smart. Percent chance Rogan knows how to play chess. I'll give it 22%. I'll give him 40. 40. Everyone knows how to play. It's whether you're good or not. Like, I know well, how to that, play That sounds like a very Tim-type statement. Everyone everyone knows how to play chess. I mean, I feel like most people probably know... The rules? Know what, what, what each piece and what each piece is able to do. You are how. highly overrating. You think so? Yes. I mean, like, I didn't play very much chess growing up, but I know that how they move, like, each, each piece and what they're able to do. You're like, horse moves in an L. Yes. One, one up, or sorry, two up, one over, two up, one over. Two over, one up. Oh, yeah. Back, over. All right, maybe, maybe you're far more accurate on this than I am. I just don't think. Like, I'm not good. I, I, don't, I, I don't think people know the rules of chess. The majority of people out there would absolutely mollywop me at chess. Well, not, I under- no, hold on. Not if they don't know the rules. And I'm not able to, like, see that many moves ahead. I can see a couple moves ahead. But, like, we're not... Yeah, I'm not setting any traps. I need you to be as equally bad and just know what direction things move for me to even have a chance. Fair enough. You survive our big T bet for one episode. I wish they sent her in there. Big Uh, T-season. Big big, T-season. Let's go. Big T's real little. I know. I think, you know what? Apparently, Rob was telling me that, like, she's pretty, pretty highly owned, higher owned than than he thought. I think that's a lot to do with people signing in being like, Big T? It must be big. (laughs) That dude must be massive. And then now they're like, oh, shit. It's it's an ironic nickname. (laughs) She's so small. Um, 
I think she would have beat Jen. Jen, yes. Jen was like bottom of the barrel. I was praying because of what happened on her but, episode last week that Big T, I'm um, Big T, Big T, I'm a Big T truther. Well, it did seem for a second like they were setting it up like who's going to be voted in? Is it going to be Jen or Big T? And it was all fake drama because it was clearly Jen. But Big T was like the outlier. She got votes. Yeah. And I think now that she's probably the person in the house that people are going to want to go up against. Yeah, probably. Like she, out, of, out of all of the females left in the house, I think she's on like the bottom tier of it. Although Ashley, old Smashley, two-time winner. She doesn't seem like she wants to be there. No, that's never and a good sign for her. Yeah. Ashley's either all the way in or all the way out. Like She could be gone pretty soon, I think. She, I'm getting the vibes of this season seems a little bit too hard because she was complaining about how like now she has to go into elimination. She doesn't want to do that. This season may be becoming a little bit too much of a drag for Smashley, who's got Boku to bucks. Yeah, what does she care? She's like hanging out in like Venezuela or something yeah. right now. It was, it was, she was doing an Instagram live. I don't want to watch it because she might be a spoiler alert. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But she's somewhere very tropical. Looks very nice. When you get millions of dollars, why not, right? Yep. But I do. I, do you think that they had this rule in place the entire time? Because we'll go back through the episode, but it was revealed when they got to the elimination that if you're in the tribunal, you can vote yourself in. That solves a lot of the problems that we talked about last week. Like, could if you didn't want Bananas going to the final, could you just never throw him in? And therefore, he couldn't win a Red Skull. Therefore, he couldn't go to the final. Yeah. Like, that's how you could just freeze people out. I saw, yeah, actually... Uh, it, se- it seems like they thought about it after they made the rule. They're like, oh, that makes no sense. We mm-hmm. need to figure this out. Uh, Rob was in my DM saying that about, like, with Wes. Because Wes obviously has a problem with Jordan. He wants to get him out of there. And he's just like, why wouldn't he just use that strategy of just, like, using... Freezing skull, him out. Freezing him out. I'm like, you know what, though? There is some value to having a quality player like Jordan out of the game. I agree. So you use you you, you don't want to face the him in best the rookies. You use a Fezzi, and you go, okay, this is where you got to be selective with getting rid of them. The strategy to use is like you know freeze them out, freeze them out, freeze them out until you got a guy that you think can beat him in a challenge because they get to kind of walk down there, see the lay of the land. I would imagine they're probably going to try to throw Jordan in against a much more bigger physical competitor that you have in a to. challenge like that. Yeah. You, yeah. The, so, yeah, the freeze out is definitely a strategy. But, yeah, you want to get you don't want those numbers flipping on you and then Jordan to have all control of the house. He doesn't seem like he's got the best political game lined up right now, but. Well, it, it's still it, the guy. The guy just comes on season and wins. There is value to getting him out of the house. Oh yeah, it, it's like there's always going to be talk where you don't want to face bananas in a final because he's so good at finals. But Jordan's even better at finals. Yes. Like get rid of like Correct. you can beat bananas. Beating Jordan's going to be tough. Even in the like the eliminate or the mission that we saw today, like Fessy was doing great, yeah. and Jordan was just kind of pacing with him. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll be in first, but like I'm not going to. Ex- spend any more energy than I have to. It's not that big of a deal. Although they had a super team that for that leg of the mission really wasn't fair versus everyone else. Yeah. And when we get to the mission, the teams just weren't fair to begin with. Like mm-hmm. it was very clear what was going on. Uh, and I even wrote down the four teams that finished fourth. I Guess don't what? completely understand why the two teams would have been made so unfair and like what plan they really had. I th- but They said it was a random draw. Yeah. I so guess I guess that's just the way happened. that it turns out. And if that's the case, then you have one super team. One Didn't help them in leg two of the mission. No. But in the actual physical part, like, who's beating that team? No one. Nobody. But you could create a better team. Because, I mean, you could have put Fessy instead of Wes on that team. Sure. Because Fessy is looking. Like, he's, I talk about, like, Jen being like a, she's the he's version. He's looking like a guy who can win this thing. He looks, he just reminds me of Zach. Yeah. Like in terms of like overall, like he's a, mon- he's a monster, man. He's a big dude. Cardio, like you would to look at him, like, like he, cardio. Yeah, he, the, he the looks, fact that he's keeping pace with Jordan yeah. and he's big and is, doesn't is scary. See, yeah, he's 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 going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, so who do you throw in against him to get him out? CD. Yeah, but see, like he, I think they're going to use Fezzi to do a lot of their dirty. Work. They should. They should. That's that's the strategy. That's why I brought his name up in terms of like getting rid of Jordan. Which, like, person that is, you know, not necessarily closely aligned with that faction 
Maybe maybe they're working behind the scenes and we don't know that yet. I don't know. But um, by the way, the that, ha- that is the guy to go to to use to do all of your dirty work because that guy looks like a monster who can beat any of these guys in the right challenge. So Jordan and Tori are not winning the season. Doesn't feel like they it. are getting the Kara and Polly cut this year. Yeah, it's the same cut that Kara and Polly got last year. Jordan and Tori are the villains of the season. Yeah, but I don't dislike them as much as Polly and Kara. Yeah, but we were on Team Jordan. Yeah, always. But like they're saying, like they're only showing you like the worst of them right now. And that's it's really they- hard to find the worst of Tori. She is very pleasant. She is very pleasant. But they are playing like uh, like good you cop, said, they're playing cop, good cop, sure. bad cop. Jordan just doesn't give a fuck. No. Although his his sourness at now here's the thing, and this is what Para Para and Kara, Polly and Kara got caught up in last year, where you only saw the worst of them. Yeah, that you know they could have just been hanging out twenty three and a half hours per day in the house, being nice to everyone. Yeah, yeah, and they showed you the the two the thirty to forty five seconds of them For just sure. being awful, and that's what they're doing to Jordan now. Like after they lose the elimination, he's basically just like crying in the corner. Yeah, here's my thing about it too. And this is just like a greasy theory, but they did mention that things were said in Thailand. Here's my thought on it. They didn't shake on it, though. They didn't shake on it. D likes to have a boo, like a drink or two. You think she gets bit boozed up? I think she got boozed up there in Thailand. Promises were made. Everyone's been there before where you kind of shoot your mouth off when you've been drinking a little bit. Now, Jor- uh, I think that's why Tori kind of backs off. She's kind of like, ah, she was kind of wasted that night when she said that she was going to, oh, you're my number one, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then Jordan's like, no, you said that to me. I'm going to take your word as Bond. But I think that's gen- that's the sense I got from the situation is that promises were probably made, but they probably weren't made in a clear uh, peace of mind, I guess. We're... People pounding the bags of chips at, at the very beginning or after the mission? I can't remember now. Pounding the bag of chips? There was a scene where, like, everyone was standing in the kitchen. They each had, like, their own bag of chips and were just... I've never seen people eat like this on reality television. It was really bizarre. How did I miss this? It was... I, it, I don't remember. Was, I think it was after, like, they got back from the elimination the okay. time before. And they're just standing in the kitchen, like, having beer. And just bags of chips. CT was like mauling a bag of chips. I mean, I could see that. I didn't. I don't recall seeing that, but I you have totally to go back and watch that. that one. That was, a, that was a fantastic part. I guess so. Like you never see people eat on TV. Never, ever, unless it's like that's the point of the challenge, whatever it might right be. Now. Oh, I'll cut to you. That's a drink, though. You see people drinking a lot on reality TV. It's true. Just don't see a lot of food consumption unless it's like you're eating beetles. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Anyway, we get to the mission. So the mission, they're all like mini finals. At least this one was. Like the first lag of this was, it looked really difficult. Mm-hmm. So like you had to get your 15 ammo box. Teams of three, 15 ammo boxes. I don't know how far the run was. I guess that's the one part, but it seemed like not an insignificant amount of distance. Do you think they evened out the weight? distribution no i don't think that they did no everyone was even i believe so yeah i mean the only people who got to the next round were double bo- double that's guide teams, what i was right? going to get to yeah. so they randomly paired everyone together uh so in the teams that came one two three four were jordan jenny and west the super team that one when you saw that one you're like yeah <laughs> oh you guys have to carry stuff uh, and, and run to, yeah cardio and lifting like i don't see how they lose this fessy kyle and melissa came in second yep uh d swaggy and Corey came in third they just beat jct and casey i would have figured jct and casey would have done better i thought they would have been one of the top three teams but guess not i don't know how ct's cardio is these days i don't know how strong jay is he seems relatively built i can't tell if he's a surfer guy or a skater guy he's a rock climber guy and those guys are strong though they are they are strong. They aren't lifting strong. They're body weight. Yeah, strong. they are body weight strong, yeah. which is usually a huge advantage in the challenge. Being oh, being more body weight strong yeah. than overall. I don't strong. know if it's great when you're carrying lifting yeah. boxes of like ammunition or what they claim is ammunition. But so, so those were the only four teams that had two guys and a girl. The rest of the teams had two girls and a guy, and those were the top four teams. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Josh yeah. for really trying for. For being a good guy. Being a good guy, being a good teammate. It reminds me of uh, Gauntlet 3 when Easy e had like his meltdown in the final and everyone is just berating him the entire time. Josh wouldn't have. 
Yeah. Josh would have been just very supportive. Great team. He would have lost, but what a team player! Very. Like, he got dealt the shittiest yeah, hand. He had the nut Everyone low. Everyone knows that was the worst hand. This girl couldn't lift anything. He's got one on his shoulder. He's carrying about ninety percent of the other one while she's just like. I, I don't. I wouldn't even say. Him I like wouldn't this. even say ninety percent. I would say he was carrying ninety nine point five. Like she like barely had a finger on it. Like what a waste of space Jen was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, she, but like he and he didn't seem like he didn't seem to get mad at her. No, I think. Well, I, I, think, I think he had already you, reserved to the fact. Like you see, yeah, you resigned to the fact that you're like, oh yeah, we're way behind. We're not like no, winning, no need to. We're freak not out. winning this, so why get mad at people when it's not my not, my mad like me getting mad is not going to change the fact that those four teams probably have a very distinct advantage, and my team's probably gonna place last. And I'm sure it helped that it was a girl's elimination. That's the whole thing, yeah. Uh, Big T, lots of heart. My girl. She did talk about how she trained a lot in the offseason to come back for this one. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to help, man. I mean. She's just, like, her and Ashley are by far, and Nani's pretty small, too. Nani's tall, but she's really tiny. I think those three are in, like, a world of trouble. So I just need Big T to get through the next girl's elimination, and I win. Well, I think we're going to see a shakeup in the eliminations. Like, Jen... You can write her off as, like, by far the worst player in the house. Clearly. Now everyone, like, there are a few who people might not respect as competitors, or you can put them on, like, a tier below. But no one is, like, object... May- I don't know about Big T. Big T would be my pick. As, Big like, T goes in there with Nani. like, and She Big, can beat Nani, Big, for sure. She can totally come out. And it depends victorious. on what the challenge is, too. Yeah. But she is set... Where she's so small, she's at such a disadvantage physically against almost... Hold up, I got a breaking update. Yay! From... Unofficial fantasy scores for the day. We have this is the biggest discrepancy I've ever seen. We've been doing the challenge fantasy league for like seven years now. D, 175 points. It was a D ep- it was really a D episode. Next closest, Wes, 62 points. D is yeah, anybody with D is all the way up at the wish, top right now. Wish I had D on my team. Corey, yeah. 55 points. Well, I want to talk about Corey in a minute here. Uh, Swaggy, 54 points. We shit talk Swaggy wins in elimination immediately. We'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, Tori, 49 points. And Jen with two ends, 42 points on the way out the door. Uh, not a huge scoring episode, I guess, for anyone. So back to this elimination for mm-hmm. a second. We're the mission. So you get all four of them in, uh, or all three of them in. They all finish. And then they go do the helicopter drop. I figured Jordan would be very good at this. Jordan was not very good at this. Here's my theory. I think he overthought it a bit too much. He definitely overthought it. It definitely, there was benefits to not being the first team to go figure that out. That should be a provision too. If there's going to be a second part of the elimination, the team that wins the first part of the elimination should pick when they get to go. That's how they used to do it in old seasons. Like, if you won the previous elimination, you got to pick the order of the next mission the next time around. There should be a benefit to coming in first. I will also say, as someone who I tree planted for years, I've been in the hel- I've been in helicopters over a hundred times in my life. I feel like the helicopter driver was clearly kind of getting the hang of it at the beginning as well. Oh, interesting. So they were like, yeah, he wasn't even online, that type of thing. I think by the time he got to the... That being said, it's just like Chris, Chris, Corey, and, um, and D. Like, good work for them. Um, nine out of nine. Like, there is no, there's no shit talking <laughs> from me. To that group. Nine out of nine, nobody was beating them anyway. But I think two out of nine, maybe if the helicopter driver was a little bit more in sync, they would have got up to five. Still not winning. Still coming third in all of it. Not making too many excuses for them. But I think the helicopter... I got the sense that the helicopter driver took a little bit to get into gear of, like, exactly what he was supposed to be doing. I can see that, but they weren't even close. No, no, yeah. And everyone... like They were two out of nine. So, like, they were not going to win. The next two teams, like, I know... Melissa, who was it? Melissa, Kyle, and Fessy. Like, I think they missed their first two, then hit their next seven. Like, it always felt like there was going to be a trial period where you're like, oh, let's, let's throw one out, see how it goes. But then the first team just didn't never adjust it. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the last, the winning team, and I thought seven was going to be good. I didn't expect a nine out of nine. Yeah, Christopher, uh, D, and Corey really oh, you're, put you're, on a show. So you're going with Christopher for Swaggy. I was going to go with uh, I was going to go with Swagatha Christie. No, that's a I'm good name, Christopher, because he's a grown man 
and you can't give yourself your own nickname. Like when he does, when he refers to himself in the third okay, person so as he, Swaggy, this reminds me of Tim referring to himself as Top Cat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not calling. I'm not calling you that nickname. No, you can't just give yourself that nickname like, and expect me to follow suit. I like Swaggy. I'm not Christy. calling a grown man Swaggy C. He will be Chris or Christopher. Maybe we get to a point in the season where, where he wins I, you over. He wins me over. Josh, I used to hate Josh. Anybody who watches the show, I used to hate Josh. Anyone who knows about the show knows we hate all the new people immediately until they win us over. They win us over. So. Christopher, you can get there. Christopher, very upset with us on Twitter. Very, a lot of a lot of Big Brother bots really upset as well. I see. I thought I was being attacked. I, I, I opened up my Twitter. I was like, my Twitter is going off. What is happening? I thought someone like troll mined me from Russia. Very poor spelling with a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. And listen, I'm not immune to typos. If you're gonna mix up your and your, it happens. You're on your phone. You're doing this. It's like two and two. You're gonna mix it up from time to time. There is no excuse with mixing up there, there, and there. There just isn't. You really need to go out of your way to type those. The TH, sure. But then from there, you have your E. Now you're going to go to the I. You're going to go to the R. You're going to go to the Y. Like, that's inexcusable. So a lot of people with very poor spelling coming at us. Um, it's a TV show. We should pump the brakes. It reminds me, I mean, just cutting to your hat for a second. I once said something very, and I'm a Josh Allen supporter. Been on the big Josh Allen since he's been drafted. Thought Josh Allen was going to be okay. Say one negative thing about Josh Allen, Bill's Mafia comes at you. We will cut your throat. Yeah. Also, <laughs> a bunch of people who can't spell. Fair, fair enough. Or use their real names, or use their real picture. That's Josh what, Allen is the best. Josh Allen is the greatest quarterback. What? Isn't he, though? He is kind of the best. He's fun to watch. He's very fun to watch. I don't know if he's the best real-life quarterback. Better than so. Sam Darnold, for sure. Of course, yeah. But uh, on, the, on the pantheon of uh, quarterbacks in the NFL... Not quite sure about Josh Allen's, uh, his, I guess his upside would be very high. His current play, fun, good for fantasy. Just like this, we need good fantasy scores. Swaggy, if you're going to score, if you're going to win an elimination, score 54 points, like you need to score more than that. It's like Corey. Yeah. Co- Corey's, Corey's going to tribunals and doing nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to shit on Christopher here. He had a good episode. No. He won. He won. He won. He shut me up. Um, yeah, yeah, shutting us up too, but I do have problems. One, he was... So, in my MVP ranks, I had the five MVPs. A slight tweak. His glasses game, like the glasses game, but we were, my wife and I were talking about it. Are they clipped on at the back? I don't know. Because it, it feels like if you're an helicopter. Athletically, he's wearing like Horace Grant that, Well, that's glasses. what I think. He should be wearing Horace Grant glasses. <laughs> that, would, that would be an upgrade. That would be pure swag. That would be pure Instead swag. Instead of wearing like the Russell Westbrook like fake glasses. I mean, I'm sure he needs them or else he wouldn't be wearing them. Of course. It's like Russell Westbrook when he walks in. Wearing the uh, the no lens glasses, you know, in the game he's not wearing those. Mm-hmm. Horace Grant needed those glasses. You get the athletic ones, but no, you hit on it. Uh, he he was winning me back. But then he referred to himself as in swaggy the, in, in, in the, the tribunal. Investigation, like yeah. you're not the Rock, man. Like, yeah. and if you're gonna he's, go full third, stop trying to make fetch a thing. Yeah, it's like, not a thing. If you're gonna go full third person. Like, you need to be emphatic, like The Rock <laughs> is. Like, The Rock says, but he was, like, demure. Yeah. Like, he was trying to be nice to the people and, like, then referring to yourself in the third person. The third person is an arrogant move. And if you're going to go with the you arrogant gotta move, the you got to go all the way with it. Especially and, if it's a nickname like that. But Swaggy's glasses and the strap on in the back are my fourth MVP of this episode. I came fourth <laughs> in the I had my top five. Uh, number five was the bag of chips. Okay. That everyone was eating. Uh, number two, Bailey actually makes it. Her face at the table when Jen was trying. Jen did the classic stupid person move of trying to create an argument. And then D asked her, what, what exactly did I say? And she's like, I don't need to answer that. <laughs> what are you doing, Jen? And Bailey's just like, Ugh. Like that one. Uh, and bananas burn on Jordan. That Jordan drop, Jordan decided to drop the thing in Germany. And it like triggered Jordan. And he was like half crying. What are you doing, Jordan? I, I get, I don't like to lose either. No one likes to lose. Have a bit more class than that, Jordan. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. He's walking around from like, he's got, him and Tori are wearing like the Jordan clothing line right now. It might as well be the fucking Daryl collection. Like, yeah. it, it's, I don't know. There's, who, they're legitimate, that gray sweater he wears, I'm pretty sure. It's just a, dirty? There's a stain. 
on it. I think that's a part of it, though. That, but no, no, that was ingrained into the fibers before they sold the yeah. damn thing. Like I think it comes. Your shirt comes with a stain. Like it's like he watched Zoolander and was like, <laughs> "This, this is the move." Why is nobody doing yeah. this? How isn't this a real thing? Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Like. Uh, Not my style, but hey, you know what? I'm wearing like a freaking t-shirt, a Bill's hat, in in a. Well, you're a part uh, of a Bill's ja- mafia. You're a, you're a part of the crew that comes at me when I mean to Josh Allen. A jacket I got like Marshalls or like, you know, like Winners or TJ Maxx or whatever in this as the states would have it. So the Big Brother bots very upset with us. Yeah. Listen, I've been on Twitter for a long time. I have a lot of hot takes. Sports fans even more vicious. One thing I didn't like. Come at me all you want. Like it's it's fine. Yeah. Um. The DMs to me about how my son should have cancer and die. Um, People send you that? Yeah. I didn't get anything like that. I got that. two separate DMs. One said that my 14-year-old, 14-month son, he's 14 months old, uh, should contract coronavirus and oh, die wow. a slow, painful death well, that's... and get cancer and die. Wow. That's... That is crossing the line. Big take brother your, bots, come on. Take your shots at me. Have your fun. But... That's a bit much. Yeah, like I've been that's, doing that's a bit much. I've been doing internet shows for years, so I got a bunch of DMs from people being like, "Oh my god, look, this person's calling you out." And just like whatever. Every single year, one of the rookies gets a little bit like me and I come on this show. We fire takes. I fire hot takes. I get really excited. I go, I, I call, and for religious people. I, I think calling Bailey Satan may have been a stretch. It uh, like, Paul, may have been a stretch. It was a stretch. Paul, but you're like, supposed to live your truth. That's a, the one thing that I've learned from but, the internet. But I come on the. I, I just come on the episodes. I just. I just go. I go aggressive. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I thought about the episode in that moment, and then on like we're on to the next week. On to the next week, and then this week they got a good cut. They were not. Really cast in the same light whatsoever. I still want, and the- I don't have anything horrible to say about. I them. still want Swaggy and Fessy eliminated immediately. I have Bailey on my team. I need her to get to the finals. I need those two idiots out. That's all I need. I think, I'm concerned about my fantasy team. Here. I think Fezzy's gonna be a problem. Where he is a rookie, you gotta think people gang up on him at some point. They should, yeah. Like he's it, well, it's almost like this. J. Like I was trying to think of who do you throw in if you're if you get to pick who you want to go against now, which you do. Who, what guy do you pick to go against? It's still probably Jay, isn't yes. it? That's why I think, okay, so I was actually talking to, again, Rob in the DMs. Spoiler Rob. Yeah, always uh, always, always uh, getting me up on my takes and stuff. So he was saying that, yeah, that maybe it creates a target for, like, D. We'll talk about that at the end, but, like, for D not taking the layup. I, I, I have, I know her excuse for that, and I understand it. Yeah, I do too. Um, but, yeah, so I, what we were saying is... For Jenny, her having that red skull, great thing. Yeah, no, no one wants to face her. Nobody is lining up to be like, let's go after Jenny. For Jay, different story. You have a red skull. They can keep throwing you in to box other people out. Exactly. Because. Well, and you're probably, and, I don't know if he's the worst guy, but he kind of seems like he might be the worst guy. Yeah. Which isn't really a dig uh, on him. A lot of good guys. There's a lot of good guys on this For season. sure. But yeah, so for him, that red skull could be a big target. Jenny, Jenny's pretty much smooth sailing, I think, for a while now. Like, who's gonna, unless the numbers flip on her and then they start using her, like how I was saying that they should use Fezzi, and they use her to get rid of all of the good girls. Yeah, get rid of Tori, get rid of D. That would be the move if you really wanted to go. Yeah. Um, so they win tribunal, the House votes in Jen. Although it was the most staged thing in the history of... And there's a lot of staged stuff. That's why I don't get why people get so upset about this show. Like, it's reality TV. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Mm -hmm. hate to tell you. Uh, I have a feeling that the producers went up to Johnny and Wes. Were like, hey, here's something funny you can do. Let's trick Jen into giving this speech. And I did... It reminded me of old seasons of The Challenge. Where there's... like Last season, there was like rivalries. Like, I won't talk to you. But you could go outside. You could go do anything. Everyone's like crammed in right now. That even on old seasons, except for the ruins, really, when everyone just hated Wes and Kellyanne, not even really Kellyanne, just Wes, that even if you were rivals or whatever, like, there's so much fucking time to kill that you're just going to naturally get along at some point and hang out, because what else do you got to do? Mm -hmm. That by the end of it, that Wes and Bananas are trying to write this speech for Jen to get her to stay, and then by the end of it, like, Rogan's in there, Bear's in there, I think Nelson's in there, like, everyone's just kind of hanging out. Because everyone's kind of like, oh my god, I think she's actually going to go through with this. 
And like you said, Wes was being cutthroat about it. Bear was cracking me up the entire time. Now you should throw that one in. <laughs> Just so fantastic. Yeah, Wes was really cutthroat about it because at the end of her actually doing the speech in front of everyone, he goes, all right, I'm throwing in Jen, which was like real sap. He knew he knew that she was never going to come back, I'm pretty sure, so he was willing to take that shot. And Bana- like, Bananas voted for Big T, too. See, that's why I'm convinced that the house doesn't know that they're working together. Yeah, they did that intentionally. Yeah, no, I agree. But I, it's by watching the show. This episode was not nearly as clear that something is going on. Of yeah, I don't think that the people in the house know that's going on. We as viewers obviously know it's but going on. They are getting along better than usual. So some people but ev- are but tipped it, off to it that. It does seem like everyone is getting along. Yeah. At yeah. this point. Yeah, good point. Do you think that the house is going to conspire against them if they figure this out and throw them in against each other? I want to see a West Bananas elimination. I really do. I mean, there is that one clip that TJ goes like, "We've been waiting for." Maybe it's not for him though. I mean, what else have we been waiting Wes for? Wes and I've been watching the show for Wes, fucking sixteen Wes and years. Bananas has never been in a never been in oh, elimination. That's happening. That's that's for who you happening. got? Bananas. Wes is better at eliminations. It's just overall. We got bananas. I guess it depends on what it is. If it's a puzzle, I got Wes. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I like that they're really shit talking Tori's ability to do puzzles. Yeah, and D's being a little two faced there. Whatever, I like D. I, I am D's yeah. bringing the heat. Hey, and D is coming this season. Like spring training is well, over. Christopher, Christopher, this is another character. D, we used to hate. sit here right hate at this table. D. Why should we give D? Oh, I used to make fun of her talking about her feelings and all of this other stuff. Like I'm pretty cutthroat on this show sometimes. Um, she's won me over. She won last season. Now she she's has in. earned my respect. She's a champ. After this episode, if this was last season and Dee was running all Whoa. these exploits, I would have came in here and tore her a new one. But she won last season. She has, she's earned my respect, so that's what she gets. Are they gearing the show? Like, is she the star of the show? Right now, yeah. Like, through two, like you're only because you either have to be involved in the elimination to get screen time. Even Corey. Like, I don't know what's going on with Corey. Has he grown up? I mean, he has like, 28 kids now or something <laughs> but he's not being Corey yeah. he's been in both tribunals he won this eliminary won this mission and he's just not saying anything it's really bizarre I don't know what he's up to I don't know what he's up to either and we're not getting any Nelson I need more Nelson confessionals to the camera I got really excited when I saw him and Big T talking to each other I think that was just sort of a, like, they, they had to splice they, in the they fact. They did not really create any sort of love dynamic there, but I was just like, in terms of me thinking about points for my squad, that would be a double, that would be, oh, an, you un- I forgot you that would be an unexpected hookup, which would just be, would just be amazing. Yeah, well, one of the reasons that I went away from Casey on the show. She's expensive. Well, she was expensive, and I ended up going to Rogan at that same price point. Or a little bit less. Because I had Jenny on my team. I already had Jenny. I don't think Jenny's going to hook up with anyone. No. On that's the problem with her is that and she's very think... Turbo-esque in the sense yeah, that, she, like, but she's... excellent at challenges, a little bit more involved in the politics game, of course. Yeah, but she's she reminds me of Jody from the dual season, where, like, she's just going to be so much better at everyone else at the missions that there's not really going to be any politics involved with it. There's just people are going to be scared of her and not want to go up against her. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. You just have to hope she continues to win. I couldn't have Casey on my team, too, because I feel like she's that type of competitor. Like, once she starts to get going, she could be really good. I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything about her. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like she's going to do a lot of politicking either or be involved in drama or fights or anything like that. You can't have two of those people on your team because only one of them can win the missions, Mm -hmm. theoretically. So I went with Jenny over Casey in that spot. But Rogan... I swapped out. I had Bear, like the Bear or Rogan spot. I'm glad I went with Rogan at this point. Although the Kayla Bear stuff is coming. Yeah. I just, I wanted to play Bear as well, but I just don't think he, Rogan at least proved that, like, if he gets to a final, he can, he can win. win. Um, He's been pretty good. Bear, I don't think can compete with the top guys. Is Bear the worst guy left? Like, if you were, if you were Fessy, I'm going to still wa- say it's Jay. And you wanted the layup. Yeah. I gotta think bananas and Wes are down on that list too. Yeah. For like, t- like you don't want to go against Jordan. No, you could beat Jordan if it's something very specific, but you're probably gonna lose. Josh presents an opt- obstacle because he's so big. 
Yeah. It's like going against CT at this point. Like they're just so huge that you could get into something where they can just beat you because of size. You don't want that. Although I would take CT over Josh at this point. But then you have Bananas and West. They're both small. Mm-hmm. They're both like conniving. They'll both like understand the rules of everything probably better than you, which does give them an advantage. But I don't know. You might want to go up against them or Jay. I think Jay. Well, Jay's just an easy target because he's Jay, already been in. Jay then Bear. Jay but then... like Bear beat Wes. So yeah, I don't think the difference is that far. It did seem like Wes wanted to go home last season. It did. And I think he knew he had no control over the game. This season, I think he feels a little bit better. Maybe. But that could fly. Bananas and Laurel had control of the game last year, and that just went two episodes. And gone, Benedict gone. Laurel happened. Benedict Laurel. That was a great episode. That was like episode of the season last year. So what else do I have here? Yeah, bananas saying. <laughs> I, I don't know if that, uh, it could be a slick editing trick, but the way that they're keeping certain people in the mix is what I want to get to. So... You're involved in the show if you have some sort of, if you win, you're getting thrown in, like you're getting screen time. Almost like Nani last week. Asif was getting thrown in. He was going to go home. He had a relationship with Nani. Nani gets a ton of screen time. He gets a ton of screen time. This episode, we don't see Nani. Bananas and Wes and CT are being worked into every episode. Mm -hmm. And it's really only those three. Like if they have, like they have nothing to do with anything, but they're all still being worked in. Like they got more screen time than Fessy did. And Fessy was like, you got the little name bar with him in first place for a while. And that was the end of him. Yeah. But like, if he can keep up that cardio, he reminds me of some sort of hybrid mix between Zach and Joss. Mm -hmm. Cause Joss has awesome cardio too. Zach does not. He might now, but at least in finals, he hasn't before, but I don't know. This Fessy guy could be a real problem Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you just get rid of him. I think you use them as you use, you use them as the elimination station is what you do. Oh, so two very poor ends playing. This was the other Swagatha Christie problem here. He's in the tribunal. Now, maybe he knows that D and Corey. <laughs> it's a great name. His I name like is Chris. Um, Christopher. Christopher. Swagatha Christopher. That doesn't work as no, well. No, no. You, you, you do you. So he's in the tribunal with Corey and D. Maybe he knows that D and Corey are just going to vote as a block regardless, so it doesn't really matter what he does. I'm surprised he didn't get, try to get Bailey in. I agree. That's, is that an oversight? We well, don't know what right the, now what the players know. If it's it, we just don't know if it's that much of a benefit. Maybe you want to lay a little bit low. Of course, taking getting getting the gen with two ends, getting that matchup, getting your red skull. That is the layup to get that red. So the skull. two the two but strongest maybe girls in the house being a rookie. Yeah, but this is your shot. With that, may not be the best situation. Maybe not, but if you know, like, all, everyone... I'm surprised w- they didn't go with it either, though. Even like, that e- is the layup. E- like, even Big T was convinced that she was going to go in and beat Jen. Like, mm-hmm. Everyone was convinced they were going to beat Jen. If this True. is your chance to get someone a red skull... Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't... They, they, he it was never even came up. fine with putting Tori in. Like, that was his plan. Yeah, maybe they're trying to lay low and make friends in the house. I don't know. It's a good strategy for them. They're new. Like, don't but don't they, ruffle but, too many feathers. I don't know. They have a voting block. Like, they have a team of four. Yeah. Like, that's more than almost everyone else has. Like, okay. if if you know that those two are together, I don't know how well... Fessy's with them. I assume Casey's with them, too. I, I'm guessing. Like, they're all from the same season of Big Brother. That's usually how it used to work with the real world Casey, seasons. Casey, yeah, I'm not sure where Ka- Casey lies with everybody. He, she doesn't get a ton of screen time yet. No. Either a really good thing or a really bad thing. Uh, Big T may be with them as well. I don't know if Big T's with anyone. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. My, my wife's comment on Big T, too nice to be on the challenge. I know. She's very trusting. She seems very naive. She's lovely, isn't she? She is quite lovely. Uh, I like that she's getting her screen time now. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing. Probably Because she, she's not winning the season. I'm happy. Oh, she's clearly not winning the season. No, I, but if she's let getting... Let me have... If she's getting... Let the, me cheer on Big T. You have she t- got a bad cut you have two, last You have two year. more episodes good for her heart. to survive. Hey, two more. She survives two more episodes. You win 50 bucks. I do. But I mean, I would be worried that she's getting this much screen time already. Eh, we're going to get through. We're going to get through that next episode. Or that, ne- that next uh, women's elimination. We're getting through there. So we're getting through there. We go to the elimination. And TJ reveals that if you're in the tribunal, you can throw yourself in. Now, is it just as easy as D saying, hey, I want to throw myself in, and then she's in? Or does the tribunal have to vote for her to go in? That seems weird. Then, like, what if it was two girls in the tribunal? 
Could they both say they wanted to go in? Yeah. Like, is it then a vote? And then maybe the guy decides. Maybe. Like, I, I didn't wasn't completely clear on how that no. worked. I, I, I thought because there was one girl that she would just be able to just take that spot. Because they didn't know the strategy of how to make the three the three pack at that time. I would guess it's so now the move would be so next week will be a guy's elimination. You want two guys and one girl in the Okay, but so that one person can't just take the spot for them. Sure, but let's say next week it's yeah. Tori, Jordan, and Corey. No, no, another girl. Uh Casey. In the tribunal. You know, Jordan would be able to just take I, it. I understand that. Okay. So here's my question. Um no, no. Let's say CT gets thrown in and Jordan doesn't want to go against CT. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to nominate himself. Could actually let's throw Tori out here. Let's put in I don't know. Casey. I already have really. Casey in it. Oh, sorry. Then uh <laughs> Bailey. All right, so Bailey. So Bailey, Casey, and Jordan. Could Bailey and Casey vote Jordan in if they're in the tribunal? Or do you have to agree to go in? I think they could vote him in. See, the, the rules are real sketchy on this. I'm not 100% sure. Well, that doesn't seem fair at all. Like, you're no. supposed to be in the, like they say, if you're in the tribunal, you have all the power. Yeah. So you should be safe from elimination, at the very least, if you don't want to go point. in. Good point. That's yeah. why I thought it was a bit tricky. So, yeah. For D, I'm sure we're going to get there. Yeah, so the reason I'm guessing D doesn't throw herself in is because they don't know this rule before they show up. Correct. And she's wearing, like, jeans. jeans. I'm sure they have, like, the gear there yeah. that she can change into. Probably hung over. Wes sent out a tweet saying, one, we left. She had no idea about this rule. She's like, it, people are going to label this as a big mistake. And on paper, it seems like a big mistake. She's like, he's like, in I reality, still think it's a mistake. In reality, you don't really know. But it's probably more of a small mistake. Because, yes, that was a guaranteed skull. You're going to get that skull. She didn't need to be wearing her Under Armour uh, apparel to beat Jen. Jen couldn't even get one. <laughs> <laughs> didn't she get one? No. I thought she got, like, one. It was, it was like, Casey-esque from the ruins, how bad her performance was. So... Um, Wes did tweet out that like that they had been drinking a whole bunch the night before. Like she was super hungover, wearing jeans down there on the spot. Doesn't know if having a red skull for her personal game is even really a good thing. At I know this point, at, maybe that makes makes D a target for Jenny. It's just like no, everyone's terrified of Jenny. She can have that red skull. Nobody's gonna be lining up to try to go after Jenny. But for D, it could be a kind of a different story. So I kind of get being on the spot, being hung over, being like, I don't want to go down there. And, and that you know, being said, big missed opportunity. Oh, yeah. Huge. Because yeah, it, one. It's a lot of retroactive have, analysis by people being like, that's the biggest mistake in the world. Like, I, you didn't know. I like how she's being completely honest about, like, how she's being a cock block. That was the ultimate. That was the ultimate cock block. Game over, Rogan. Sorry, you're not having any more fun. That was the exact moment for her to capitalize. But I, hey, listen, I have been hung over many, many of times. No, I don't believe that in for my a life. And it, if I had a certain level of hangover going into that thing, I, I imagine I could be in a situation where I'm like, do I really want to go in there right now? No. But there's also, a, and maybe this comes back to the thing of why uh, Swagatha Christie didn't throw in his wife, mm -hmm. my wife, that. If you don't go into elimination, you can't go home. Mm -hmm. There's still that aspect of it, too. Like, you can get your elimination in somewhere. Yeah. This was the easiest one, presumably, to do it. Like, it's a free win. Yeah. It's like the free space. You got to buy in the first round. Yeah. I think Christopher and Bailey, their mentality was like, let's not get a target on us right now. That makes sense. The skull is although, literally a red target. Although, if you do the retroactive analysis, I would be like, no, everyone should have wanted, like, should have wanted to go into this one. Yeah, the only thing that you know is that you need one of those skulls. So I don't know. We're gonna it's, get. It's a mistake for D for sure. You cannot say that it's like, oh, that was a savvy move. It's like, no, you gave up. A you layup. blew it. Like that was a that was an absolute layup. That was uh, give me that thing, and you would have pacified Jordan and Tori are mad at you but they're not unreasonable if you if you took, jordan could be you, pretty unreasonable if you took the gen layup it'd be really people would, be, would understand they would have no like they to were stand they on. were lining up to take the yes. gen layup they get it exactly is that yeah exactly her and jenny were both fighting for the right to get the gen layup so if she took that thing for herself uh, maybe Jenny's a little bit upset. Tori's a little bit upset, but like they'd be like, "I get it. 
he took the gen layup because the opportunity to take the gen layup showed up. Now she gives it over to Jenny, and it's just now now she actually she ended up with an en- like a full blown enemy by not taking it for herself. Also, I. Someone did bring it up on the show. Like, do you really want to give a layup to Jenny? Like, she's now basically automatically going to the final. That was was Smashly. Yeah, it was a very reasonable point from Smashly. Yeah. Just like, you've put her in the final. She's going to be impossible to beat in the final. Now, people can lose finals in myriad ways. So it's not a guarantee that she's going to win the final. I hope she is. She's on my team. But why give her the layup? Yeah. Like, it's, and Tori, too. Like, I guess Maddie and Casey would be the other two at this point. Like, they seem like legit competitors. Like, let them knock out someone good to get, like, force them into a situation where they have to, Jenny has to face Tori to get the Red Skull. Then you eliminate one of them at the same time. Like, let someone shitty go up against Jen. Put in Jenna or Nani or something like that. Let my girl Big T. Big put, T, yeah, put in Big T. Let my girl Big T put in that work. I wanted to see. Oh, I wanted. I wanted to sit down across this table and from just you, laugh at me the entire time, and just go. You may get your shot. Maybe she won't go in. Big T, baby. Maybe Let's she go. won't go in. Uh, she, they're, they're. I mean, no. I mean, I'm ne- reasonable. Ne- I know that she's going to be targeted as one of the weaker people. Yeah, but she might be at, in at this point, depending on who gets thrown in the tribunal and the vendettas that they have with each other. You might save some of the shitty people for later on. Yeah. Like, do your best to, pro- like, I could see the girls doing their best to protect Big T at this point so they can save Big T for themselves as, like, the layup win. Think of Big T as a stock. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good, po- like, it's a very reasonable point. Yeah. Saying greetings, Earthlings. Greetings, Earthlings. What, was she listening to the Monstars rap song at the beginning? She's, She's pumping that up going in? It's different. She's a different... Different kind of gal, I guess. So I don't know how she did on Amazing Race. I assume not well. I don't think she did very much. I don't know how she really ended up on. She's very. She's. I, I think because she's smoking. Yeah. And maybe I haven't. I don't follow her on Instagram. I assume she has a ton of Instagram followers. Yeah. They they enjoy a good Instagram follower count for sure for this stuff. I think Nisa's washed, or like she could win some stuff here. Because like I think she's washed. Because that would have been the move. Because Anissa definitely beats Jen, but Anissa has played 12 seasons of the challenge, and she is abysmal at finals. Throw in Anissa against Jen, get her the red skull that gets her in, then never throw her in again. Mm -hmm. So she's automatically in the final. Like, that's a win. Anissa's not winning a final. No. And then we get Anissa the entire season, who's like a lot of fun. And she's historically very good at eliminations. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, there's just a whole crew. No Nelson, really. You no. got Nelson for maybe 20 seconds of this episode. Very little bear in this episode. Yeah. Corey, very little of him, even though he was on the winning team. It's basically no, hardly any CT. No CT. He's pounded that bag of chips, though. You just missed that part. Yeah. That was like his moment of the know, episode. I must have been looking at my phone for a second or something. Can't be looking at your phone. It's probably Rob. It's probably Rob in my DMs. B- blow, he's blowing up your phone? Yeah, no. it probably is. No. It was at the very beginning, too, and that's when Rob was like going crazy. Mm-hmm. Calm down, Rob. <laughs> Get the scoring to us quicker. How about that? <laughs> Shots fired. Figure that out first. We don't need your V1. or v- I guarantee you by the time like we finish this show and put it out, the scoring will have changed. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're a big fan of giving us the first draft. D probably has a 3,000 points because she's probably on Rob's oh, team. If she's on Rob's team, like watch out for... Always watch out for who's on Rob's team to see like the inflated scoring that they get. I like that I saw that I think he has Nelson on his team. Which oh, so that's good like, for you. That's good news for me. All right, that's all I got. That's all I got, really, too. Good episode. I liked it. Yeah, it was fun. I'm into this season so far. Maybe it's because it's the only thing on TV. It, it probably has to do with but that. But that happens. You got UFC coming back, though. We do. UFC 249, apparently. Very fluid situation. Is this going to happen? Ch- percent, I think it's... Percent chance. 60? Uh, probably more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, they're going to the uh, Lemoore, California, which is the home. It's a native reserve, right? To Tal- Tachi Palace Casino, which uh, Cody, for years upon years, on like Thursday nights, they have something called Tachi Palace Fights. So every, it's the California regional scene. Usually um, they fight out of this, this establishment. Funny thing is, is that Habib trains in San Jose, California. He's like, 
an hour and a half away. From he's this not place. there though. Well, yeah, no, because he's went home. But like the funny thing is, is that if he had stayed, he was told to that you know everything was shutting down in San Francisco and the surrounding area to like go over to Abu Dhabi. Dana told him to do that. And then once he left, basically, he wasn't able to get back in. So kind of a shit show. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. So whether it should happen or shouldn't happen. Yeah, that, that's, mean, irrelevant that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. Will it happen but or I think, won't it happen? I think. Are they actually going to have like. People are like blockading and not letting people into. But like, who's going to blockade? Everyone's staying the fuck inside, Pat. Like, yeah. they're, they're going to make. It's going to happen. And it's not like. California owns that land. That's native land. Yeah. They can do whatever they want on it. Yeah. So I think it's happening. So it's going to be a UFC 249 Ferguson versus Gaethje, which is like, oh my God, it's like sex. Like that is such a good fucking it, fight. Is it? Is Ferguson guaranteed to win? Uh, no. Okay. Um, it helps that he's been training for what was like his legacy fight, essentially. He's been training. Gaethje's coming off the couch. But Gaethje has literally already in interviews said, like, listen, I don't have I haven't been training for this. I have I'm coming shooting out of a cannon in the first 10 minutes. I'm trying to put him away. He's like, because I know Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson has like some of the best cardio in MMA. Okay. He's like, if we go five rounds, like I, I don't like my chances to win rounds four and five against him. So if Gaethje is like the number like this guy's never been in a bad fight. Never. So like, explosions. It's going to be awesome. There is no way for this fight to not deliver. Like it is so what, probably one of the best fights you could possibly make. So what so they're doing it there. Aren't they doing like the other half from like Spider Skull Island or something like that? No, so the island is not a, uh, not ready yet. They're putting in equipment and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but that's where they're going to try to hold future cards. They're going to use they're going to do like a month worth of cards. They're just doing cards every single week out of the island. All right. I mean, there was a guy in Joe Rogan's podcast um, where he was, like, all big up on masks, and he's talking about masks, and, like, I guess the guy was an MMA fan as well, and he's kind of, like, he wasn't too concerned. I mean, like, I, I don't know the rules, the ins and outs of all of this stuff. I know that the safest thing to do is obviously to not have any of these <laughs> events, clearly, but this guy who was, like, big up, talking about masks, how everyone should be wearing masks, he was, like... He was like, it's not really that big of a deal. The biggest concern that you should be having right now is large groups of people. If you have two people one on one, of course, if if they're all getting tested, are they? But as the thing, are they all getting? tested? I mean, when they did the event in Brazil, there was nobody getting tested. So <laughs> hopefully, they've stepped that up. That would be very, very important for them trying to control the PR narrative of yeah. all of this. But. Um, I mean, I just want to see fights and bet on fights. So, like, I'm no moral police. I know it's You just a, want to see it of happen. Of course it is safer, you know, for everybody to do nothing right now, but... Give us some entertainment. I'm here for the fights. And this is one of the sports where we can kind of work around. If we're in this for a long, long time, we, we're going to need something. So, oh, I'm, just, I'm okay with UFC being that something. Just like my new idea for golf. What's that? So, golf is really easy to do this with. Because there are so few people that you actually need for golf. You have your caddy and you. And then like the broadcast crew or whatever, like the camera people. So you could in you can spread people out on the course. So you don't play in threesomes, you play in twosomes. Then there's only four people walking along at a time. Very easy to social distance. Or you do it like those events earlier in the year where there's two courses. So you split up the entire field into groups of two across two courses. Mm -hmm. Then there's even fewer people. You would need more broadcast people, obviously. But then you just keep all the golfers out. I think that's a way you could do it. Mm -hmm. And it's out in the open, too. Yep. And you don't need fans. So I feel like yeah, golf should get back up and running. Maybe not 156-person fields, because then you have clubhouses and stuff like yeah. that. That's, but it's like, like, yeah, that's the trickier part. Invo in make a bunch of events that are like... I, they already have the schedule with all yeah, the sponsors Yeah, but that's, not, that's, that's not... Yeah, but that, I mean, they rejig the schedule. I feel like you could have, like, you could, ha you could have... T take 25 of the best players in the world or i guess you need doubles so that's tougher to to shrink the fields is tougher like you could cut 144 to 120 but to call them all like wgc's that's a bit tougher i don't know i feel like you can make golf work i mean there's golf going on right now in arizona yeah it's like the minor 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 leagues but it's happening See how that goes. And then there's like the cactus or the cactus tour, the outlaw tour, and the cactus tour. What's the one that Jeff won? 
with that girl. I believe that is the out. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I'm really trying not to bet on this stuff. I'm doing my best, and it's working so far. We gotta see how far we can go into the future. Before the outlaw we... tour is a thing, though. The outlaw tour is a real thing. The cactus tour is a real thing. I don't know what the women's tour is called. Okay, but like half of the people withdraw every week. I didn't know if outlaw when I saw that like pop up on like the DK feed if that was like Sims. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I know. This day and age, you don't know. Don't know. Like, like, is this a real thing? Is this like, is this real in the sense that like? League of Legends is, or is it like hey, literally the computer playing the computer? Literally the computer playing the computer. But apparently, there's real golfers Re- real playing golfers? on the Outlaw Tour, and, and you can play DraftKings lineups around. What it. a name for a golf tour that is still existing! Like perfect marketing, and just kind of fell the Outlaws. They need to bring back like the Hooters Tour. That was a thing for ages. No, Ted Potter Jr. King of the Hooters. Tour. I could see it. Uh, I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. You can follow Paul on Twitter at. Paul Shag and check out the Dogger Pass podcast up on the DraftKings YouTube channel, the Pat Mayo Experience audio feed, breaking down UFC 249. There's a first look. There'll be a full preview, as long as the card is still going on, coming out next week. So remember to subscribe to that. And if you do subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast and you decide to leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you enjoy about the PME, you're in a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars. And if you want to get into a draw for 23 DK dollars from this episode, smash the like button, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, and tell me what your MVP was for this episode. Doesn't need to be a person, to be a person, place, or thing. That your favorite part of the episode, boom, you're in that draw for 20 DK bucks. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!